So today I'm here with uh, Councillor Marilyn Baptiste from the Hanigwadin First Nations Government and uh, here to interview her on the leadership. So, so Marilyn, what motivates you as a leader? I guess um, growing up with uh, my late dad, who was a chief since before I was born, taught me a lot of um, leadership skills and was my mentoring all of my life and I wanted to follow in his footsteps since a very young age and be able to help our people answer what is sovereignty, what um, and how do we protect our land, our rights and our title. And that's who we are as Indigenous peoples, no matter where you live, no matter how you live. That's the questions that you need to answer. Alrighty. So my second question for you is, how do you lead a balanced life? So terms of like keeping keeping with the, the four sections of the medicine wheel in, in that sense. That's a very difficult um, question to answer because we um, as leaders you basically are very very tied up with everything everywhere consumed your entire life, your entire being, and to be aware, try to be aware of um, finding that balance, even though you're aware of it, you know the, the areas that you need to improve on, the, uh, it's still it's very difficult because of the issues that we face as leaders, um, being spokespersons and standing up for our people in our communities. And always asking other leaders as well, how do you do it? How do you try to find the balance within and um, also in the environment that you work in? So it's uh, a constant battle and it's um, a constant journey. So my third question for you is, how do you engage in your cultural teachings while leading a modern lifestyle? <laughs> Um, that I would have to say is um, you just basically have to make time in your calendar, in your life, you know, to, to be out there on the land. I mean, in our gatherings is a big part of it. And um, being able to get out there, do our traditional activities with family, and especially um, trying to schedule in time with family and and friends to be out on the land and just get out there and, and do those activities on the land. See who's out there um, and all of that is a part of finding the balance too, I guess. Um, being able to breathe, to stop and breathe and be able to taste the berries and to eat those healthy foods that keep our, our people healthy, our elders healthy. And reflecting on that, I guess, is um, a real good part of um, finding the balance in life and being able to spend that precious time with family is most important. And sometimes we get too busy and we leave that behind. So just being able to be out there on the ground and schedule it in, um, put it in our calendars. Sometimes even that doesn't work, <laughs> but yes, yeah. um, just getting out there and doing it. Okay, and then my fourth question for you is, uh, what are the barriers that a leader needs to overcome when leading Aboriginal communities? There is uh, definitely a lot of barriers and challenges um, that we need to overcome, you know, um, being able to find the balance of being in the community as well as out there at, abroad and fighting with them and, and representing our communities with government and industry and all those those third parties who are trying to impact and um, destroy our lands or our way of life. Um, being able to also try and uh, lead the way for a community to heal 
because healing is a lifelong journey and that is something that a lot of people fear just because they will hear healing in itself or um, I can't remember the other words <laughs> but it, oh, like treatment you know you don't use some of those words um, but to be able to be out on the land and doing the traditional activities those things help heal our people as well um, and you just don't say it. you see it in that way um, other barriers to overcome is you know the unfortunate dysfunctions from the processes of assimilation that come from residential schools and the white paper policy and beating each other down uh, rather than working together and um, providing for our community in a healthy way. So those are some of the challenges that are always there and have always been there for, for since contact. Just as a last question for you and uh, and other, because this interview is for other Aboriginal youth, younger people in my age category who are in the business um, area, and they to be and are striving to be leaders within our own communities. And what what would you say if you you know? What would be a message that you would want to give to to them to ask for? To be leaders? Mm -hmm. I would say don't ever let anyone talk you out of it. I remember, I mean, that was something I wanted to do since I was very young. And I worked towards that all of my life. Every experience in my life, I looked at it as a way of helping mentor me and helping me grow to be a better leader and of course no one is perfect and we continue to learn and get um, greater skills with every step we take so keep your chin up and um, be proud of who you are and where you come from those are the things that are solid and keep you grounded um, and that's what helps us to stay the course with the fight to protect our land and who we are mm. I will to channel you out for that. And Thank you. And I am.